Hello everyone to the uh, viewers of Data Quest. And as we celebrate uh, 40 years of Data Quest, we are bringing luminaries and industry leaders to give their insights on current ICT trends and the future. So this time we have a veteran of the industry in the form of LC Singh, Executive Vice Chairman at Nihilant. Welcome, sir. It's a great honor to have you here. Thank you so much, Sunil. It's a pleasure to be here. So uh, uh, the very first question I'd like to ask you is about, you know, the before we look at the future, a uh, bit about the past. Now, Indian IT has grown from being worth rupees 100 crore in the early yeah. 1980s to around $225 billion today. So you That'd are a veteran true. of the industry. You have seen it all. How has this evolution been like? Initially, it was a lot of hard work, I must say, because uh, nobody would know that India can uh, give uh, value-added service to IT industries. So that was the education here, you know, the whole IITs, and I would say up to mid-90s. And then things started changing. So I would say a lot of development and threshold was reached between 95, 96, uh, and uh, uh, till 2000. 2001. So first phase of development and recognition happened then. And then, uh, you know, the uh, internet burst and then the boom again with the powerful computing and the uh, PC, essential lap, laptop and uh, powerful laptops and uh, mobiles coming into the picture that created an absolutely new threshold of uh, requirement and uh, then no looking back. I think that's how it has happened. But very pleased actually because uh, uh, certainly I contributed a few bricks in that initial IT and I uh, started a few countries I know what used to struggle and uh, the kind of stature, respect and, uh, uh, and I would say the rewards even uh, that people are getting now in IT. They're not available to us. Right. So we put in a lot of hard work, a lot of, I would say, personal sacrifices. And I'm not talking about me. I'm saying for generic, almost the entire generation did that. And uh, I think, uh, personally, I'd like to thank all my colleagues who made it happen. So th that 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 is what the progress that led to 2019. But I mean, after 2019, the pandemic saw a sea change. So what are the examples of some of the change of strategies that have resulted from it? You know, what kind of IT technology solutions have emerged in the post-COVID era? I mean, I tell people like 2019 to 2023 almost feels like 20 years at times. It is because it was a shock. Came as suddenly. So... The communication which was taken for granted, meaning physical communication and the uh, travel and you know the hoteling and all that, which was a routine because we used to travel almost five months a year on average I was doing, even in those days, and uh, suddenly came to naught. And uh, people who were coming to office, uh, they were not there. There was no way to reach, and. Uh, and we all, you know, every company I'm speaking of, I hope, is that overnight they had to uh, create a working from home culture, which means the whole uh, communication infrastructure, logistics. I mean, if you recall, Sunil, that uh, even sending laptop to someone's home was a full exercise when your car could move in the city. So, so it was quite a few administrative challenges and. Uh, even government's uh, interventions and all that, I think that helped. We coped with bare minimum, kind of carrying on with the current customers. But what suffered uh, was two counts. One was that the newer customers, uh, acquiring them was not that difficult, I would say. Because when you describe what you can do, and already they know India, so the credibility is there for people to give you a job. But that relationship which developed, you know, the softer side of it, which happens when you go and meet and meet for dinner and lunch, you know, there's gossip, that stopped completely. So it became a very transactional, formal relationship. 
trips basically during that COVID period now. No? Uh, that was one uh, thing I'm saying. I would say it was a loss, especially for companies like uh, mid-sized companies. And the reason was because we didn't have the setups in every country the way big companies have. So they had full functional CEOs and officers and they could carry on, but we didn't have. So mid-sized companies, I think, suffered a lot because of that. So they could survive holding on to their current plan, getting labels of new customers, but expansion was a problem. The second thing was the employee turnover, <coughs> which hit the industry suddenly, suddenly like a thunderbolt. And the reason was that, uh, uh, so imagine a, a, a person sitting in Chennai, uh, he would keep working in Chennai uh, from the home ground, uh, um, happily, even if he gets, let's say, 20% less than what people will get in Bombay. That's example, okay, I'm not talking about the real sense. And uh, uh, so that was a constraint because he would not move to, or she would not move to Bombay and happy with what they were getting. Now suddenly the call comes and saying that, okay, you keep there, be there. You don't have to move from your home and you can work for a Bombay company or a, a Delhi company or, and the race is started. So if I lost a guy, in the middle of a uh, you know project, when anyway criticality is there, relationship are tertiary, and within that then somebody threatens to leave. So the kind of I think uh, it's a very strong word to use that some employees and associates took advantage of it, and that I don't think it was ethical. From I would have I'm saying in our days, our uh, professional lives when things were there, I don't think it would have been very rare to think of. But I guess that new generation also is getting, you know, that instant gratification. And, you know, we waited for our homes uh, for 20 years. And now they want in second year. Uh, same thing with credit card cards and things like that. So you can relate to why it happened. I'm not trying to make allegations, but I'm saying it happened, which didn't suit actually the companies. So their cost, direct costs just started going up. Even if you recruit new people, you have to train them for a year or so before they can perform any credible task. So I think, uh, again, mid-sized companies uh, were again um, on, the, on the receiving side. And uh, uh, these two challenges by seeing with the question. In terms of innovations, I think uh, what happened is that since the best of the, 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 the people were stuck at home, uh, who could travel and ideate and, you know, those kind of people. They were stuck at home and then the IP development, or at least in our case, we, we some of those ideas which were always there and we wanted to develop, we started investing and polishing and bringing them to the fore. So I must say a number of IPs were polished and created now, which given a year of preps uh, for of marketing and so on, uh, they are ready to go to the market now. So I believe that a lot of activity should happen, not just by us, but I'm saying the island. But many companies should be, uh, I would think if my uh, hypothesis is correct, should be there uh, with the products, which is fantastic. Uh, uh, it's been my dream for 90s that India, I think, missed the boat from the products market. Uh, or else possibly would not be talking about than 220 uh, billion, but talking in trillion, uh, which could have been possible. And that's the only regret I carry on, just to agree with a little bit, that uh, uh, all the major companies and products and services, especially in which are known, they all come from one country. You know? And I'm sure that uh, uh, we Indians are involved in creating that edge then now. Uh, but we need a different mindset. So the aggression that I see in your generation, they should also develop that uh, mindset of not just uh, getting out in round three or not round four. They should take it three and make it a mega company. So that's, I'm saying, my dream. So the positive side, there's a lot of innovation that happened and they're ready to go to market. My only hope is they should not sell it cheap. 
they should take it through create brands and we should also be known as creators of brands basically yeah. so that is what i i see now things have stabilized now attrition's have gone down things are coming to normal and and i think people who were hopping job during covid will suffer yeah so any thanks for that insight yeah there are some peculiarities and we have also overcome a lot of things like you say that dream of yours i think we are on the verge of uh, realizing it so i think even yes. like one thing was we used to talk of it services like when your company was formed in 2000 that time but now we are talking of as we are it consultants to the world so would yeah. you say that uh, we have come on age because we are finally we are talking of consultancy we are talking of no, products no question yeah so but i would the, like to know the, your strengths uh, and areas of improvement for indian it from that point of view uh, it's very clear see you said the very right word. We are seen as the IT consultants of the world. But how do we graduate to be seen as a business consultant? If IT is the major enabler for change, then we should be seen as business consulting and you know, transformation. And so the business transformation and not digital transformation. So one of the things I, I, I do not call that what we are, that uh, every IT company has become a digital transformation company. But anyway, IT is digital. So slowly everybody is digital. That's not the point. The question is now, do we know business enough to be able to advise them to transform using technology? So what I'm saying is that the, uh, the, the and this is, I, I might be jumping maybe to future question that you may have in mind, but because the technology has also, also affected not only the enterprises, but has affected the consumers as well through their social networking, communication within themselves. So they have become a major influencers on the enterprises to the extent that they can demand what they want now. So the push mechanism which you worked earlier is no longer valid. I think it, you have to give what people want, essentially. So given that scenario, you need mechanisms to understand the voices of the customer, that what is it the customer is saying and what do they want from us now, incorporate that. Therefore, you need listening mechanisms. And that's what concepts like design thinking and the labs and all that I'm trying have come up. So the innovations are happening in pockets in India also. And I'm sure I think the, uh, the next target is that in India must be seen as a business transformation partners using technology. I'm not going all the way. So anyway, I like that because uh, though we are talking of the article of IT consultants of the world, but business consultants of the world, I like the ring to that. And you're right. Once that happens, then we will, you know, have a pie in the entire economy of the world. But oh, on top, true. yeah. So on top of that, I'd like to add, you know, there's one more layer to that. And that is like, uh, you can't escape it, you know, chat GPT, GPT-4, all that is there. So how soon will AI technologies like chat GPT be integrated into business processes? Already and, they are getting, already we are integrating. Okay. See, anything good, I think, Indian IT is very smart. So if APIs are available and they're available, already, in fact, we have integrated in our product, uh, which we are about to launch, in fact, tonight possibly. And uh, so it's already integrated into uh, the product. So use cases we are determining where to, but uh, full uh, wherewithal is available. I'm sure no, we are not the only one. Other companies are also thinking. And something like this for customers when this, they demand. Already one of my customers demanded that please integrate in our uh, app that we have developed, uh, Chat GPT, and we are doing with them also now. So Chat GPT, uh, Meaning I'm saying AI. AI will, I may use a very uh, a generic word, it will become uh, given. So it's not something that uh, do you think of doing it or no, it's like commoditized. It will get commoditized. So whatever tools are available, they'll be democratized uh, sort of setup. Many tools will be available, you'll have choices. Like you have choices in cloud and so on now. And they'll come along it and the IT will, uh, it will be very typical that process must uh, integrate with whatever is available. I won't take just chat GPT because there are many already available in the market. So that's what is given, is given now. 
that AI is no longer a luxury, but it's integrated now in the change. But I, I'd say that India is slightly lagging in AI research. You think we need like AI centers of excellence and all that because we are still government lagging. Of India, government of India has announced it should have done possibly 15 years back. Right. Which is why uh, you know some of these announcements are coming. It's not that they came out of blue. They were talking about it since last six, seven years. It was when they talked about automated cars, wheel drive. It was not the question of driving cars. The question is the research into the whole technology of AI, which was being discussed. Neural networks, how does the brain respond, and so on. So I think uh, uh, next phase, uh, in, in personal opinion, we still have chances in uh, India. So we are still, I'm saying, we are dealing with the, the neural networks. Okay, so AI is essentially neural network combined with the uh, cloud and data and you know the analytics and BI and basically giving an edge. So it's not only pattern recognition, but applying the human element of it to predict the future now, so much more accurately. To me, that is AI, that's what I call now, artificial intelligence. But if you see, you know, the uh, Sunil, the, the way human body functions, Intelligence doesn't come just for the, from the brain, okay? The brain is the focal point, but it uses the entire body to, to listen to the environment now. So the idea is when are we going to create an enterprise? An enterprise which is listening continuously now. And that is the next phase, basically. So it's not an individual productivity that AI we are referring to. We should be looking at enterprise interactivity. Okay, which which can sense something is changing and takes action. And that is my dream, you know, somebody can come. So, Anya, you talk, like we talk of artificial intelligence, you talked of the human element. So I see Nehalen talks a lot of, you know, humanizing technology. That is That's your catchphrase. <laughs> so if you can just uh, tell us what it is and how it will be relevant. Because when we say humanized technology, I mean, when the AI comes even more into force, I think that will become even more relevant. As I said, AI is given. Yeah. It's a commoditized now. What more? Yeah. Right. I'll tell you one of the things now that we discovered that number of technologies which are there now are being developed. They're very intrusive. So they'll put a headgear, they'll put something on you and then they listen to it because you can't control. We firmly believe that is not the way to go to the future. Eventually people will realize that they are being violated in sense of you know data and and data privacy and everything will become more and more prevalent in future now. So therefore, you need to have an R&D uh, which looks into uh, anything, any research devoid of any intrusiveness. So for instance, uh, uh, we went on drawing board, a number of IPs that we were developed earlier using devices, but you remove everything. And saying that if you can't develop just like looking at me, then not necessary now. And I am uh, not, not uh, revealing my, not losing my anonymity. So if I choose to be anonymous, don't recognize me. Okay, you can take the input, but retain it anonymous, don't give my name. These are the things basically we practice. So no intrusiveness, complete privacy, and uh, as minimum, uh, kind of data requirement from you as possible to predict the behavior. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. I mean, even we have found that people don't like devices and something that intrudes. So yeah, if... and many of them fail because of that. You see, Google Glass they experimented, right. but nobody wants to put it here. EEG, which were mapping the eye movement and all right. tracking. Right. But why would I, you know, I mean, uh, the whole market <clears throat> research itself will go, go for a huge chain. The psychiatry can go for a chain. Yeah. Schooling, career planning, uh, you know, counseling, they all can go for a massive change if the technologies uh, are not intrusive. Yeah. So uh, I think, yeah, sorry, sorry, complete. No, no, 
Yeah. So I think we've covered a lot of ground. I think we've, we've discussed like even the history, the future and all. So I'll, just I'll ask one last question. So yeah. you have partially answer, answered it. Is India ready to be a tech giant in the road to India 2047? Because for the first time, people are talking of, you know, India being the second largest, third largest, even the largest economy by a hundred years after independence. So what do you think? Where are we? What more needs to be done by both the industry and government? Shall I be blunt or... Please be I... blunt. Please be blunt. Because only by being blunt, we will achieve our goals. We can't live in a fairyland. So... What pains me, uh, even though right. I'm saying I'm product of the same, <clears throat> but we are, we, our education policy, we are creating robots. Now, I think that must change. Right. And robots, uh, I'm saying... Uh, uh, are efficient, repetitive, okay, and uh, and they will do what they are trained for. Is that the India we are uh, looking forward to? Right. So that is one thing now. So you want creativity. You want, so that that human element. Why are we not nursing? I'm saying. Why? Do, I mean, look at child Sunil. I'm sure you have children. Yeah. You have. You know, so how much they? How much time is? given to them or their course to discover what the guy is really built off. What is their tendency? Why does everybody has to go for JEE or need? Is that the end of life? And so much pressure is put on the child and so much pressure is put on the parents that we are creating in totally different industries parallel to you know the institutions now. Right. So institutions are nothing. They are just registered and they are teaching nothing. Everything, all teaching happens outside the classroom now. So to me, we are creating robots. That is not the things we are. We want creative. Frankly, I'm saying if I have to employ today, even in Nayland, right. I'll have a number of people who are psychologists, uh, your English literature. I'll have people uh, with uh, anthropology, uh, clinical psychologist, economist, and they all will play the role because I'm aiming at business transformation. Right. Okay, entertainers, entertainment. I'm big time in entertainment. I'm creating, in fact, the first animation film of ours from idea till the product is going on sixth, being launched of all over Africa. Okay. Something the business is, is not in a steel frames structure. If you are in business transformation, you transform with the business. Right. Attention. So I think there is, is required to be a great closer look at right. education system. And allow the child to have the freedom of what he is designed for or she designed for. So, anyway, thanks for that. I think that's a great food for thought in the age of AI, how to become more human. I guess. Yeah. So, Absolutely. Yeah. That's great food for thought. So, I'd like thank to you. thank you for giving all those well, insights. Thank you. Thank you. It's thank been you so great much. talking to you. Yeah. Likewise. Bye. Yeah.